but this might be the craziest build we've ever had on Boosted Lifestyle. This is a Hellcat engine. 707 horsepower minus the blower. That's because we're gonna put twin turbos on it. It's going in this white Fox body that is super clean with this G-Force T56 Magnum transmission. We're looking for a 1200 horsepower twin turbo six speed Fox here and I get to build it. <laughs> Let's go. Obviously the biggest issue is nobody makes a Gen 3 Hemi motor mount for a Fox body. <laughs> it's about to get wild in here. And if that wasn't enough, a bunch of my good friends got together, got me my own Fox body, and that's going to be my manual swap. So in the garage right now, we have two T56 Magnums from G4s, top of the line everything, and I'm billet parts everywhere. 2023, our year. We actually picked this one up as a replacement motor. It had a little bit of a tick or something in it. So obviously no accessories, no manifolds, no blower on top of it, which is okay. We've got to somehow adapt a different style intake manifold to this thing so we can put some turbos on it. That's a nice bell housing, Kyle. So this transmission is basically the same as my transmission. The only thing is Tick Performance assembled this one, but they used all G-Force gear sets. Basically top of the line, billet everything in this one, just like the one over there. But let's get this thing bolted up. And I did raise the car up so when we align the transmission, we can make the motor mounts and make sure everything in the drive line is straight towards the rear. Well, this engine actually came out of a Trackhawk and the pan is a little bit intrusive right now. We're sitting at about, about a five degree slope backwards. That isn't the issue. It's the issue is just how far it is off the firewall here, which ideally that's actually really nice because it's so easy to work on back here, but we'd like to get it like a little bit lower, a little bit further back because the trans is a little bit high in the tunnel. And the uh, motor mount situation is just out to lunch here because I'd have to like, yep go all the way over there. You wanna see how cool uh, a Hemi is? This is a factory port on a Hemi. Look how huge it is. It's literally a straight shot down to the valve, into the valve. Like that is massive airflow into that valve. We're in an LS, like look how restricted that is to get into that valve down there. The Hemi just flows way better. Other than the fact that the 5.7 and the 6.1 and the 6.4s have like glass bottom ends in them, they would be perfect for junkyard motors. And I think we're gonna start seeing it more if they come out with like a cheap rotating assembly to put in them, cause they just flow like a lot better. So this pan right here is off a Trackhawk. We have one coming for a car right now. So I'm gonna rip this one off so we can replace this one and hopefully it gives us that extra little bit we need uh, for this to sit in the car. Here is the difference. The main part we are looking at is like right here. That thickness compared to right here, this thickness. So that'll give us the degrees that we want and we can put the motor just a little bit further back. Do you think? Probably. All right, we got this uh, Stifler's transmission mount for a T56 into a box body. And we're gonna start by getting the transmission centered in the back using this mount. And then when it'll be easy to just center up the, the front and make our custom motor mounts. Wait, in theory, everything's always in theory. So we've got the cross member in down here. It actually puts the engine in like a decent spot. The only issue we have now is that this specific cross member, the plates actually like tip backwards. So they're offset to the engine mounts. I'm probably gonna cut these ones off, build my own little thing out of a uh, round tube instead. And that way it gives us extra clearance for the headers. Cause right now the headers, if they bolt up here, they'll actually hit this mount. So we'll come from this area right here, build a piece out to here and then build off our mount to that piece. Cut the original mounts off. Gonna put the motor back in, try and get a rough place of where I wanna build my new mounts and then start getting some tube in there. Dang, this is a cool project. And that one, I get to work on two cool things this winter. Mind blown. G4 
just fabbed up some quick mount. Just fabbed up some quick mounts. I moved it um, instead of being like in the center line of the mount. I just moved it to one side. That just puts us in a better spot over the K member. That it'll be straight up and down like over the K members. One goes on one side of the engine. One goes on the other side. I don't know the best way to align this thing, so I've got a string running from this jack stand all the way to the rear diff. Um, and it aligns with the crank bolt and the output shaft on the trans and the diff within about a degree. So I think we are good there. Our tip back on the engine is just slightly under four degrees and we can change that by adjusting up and down the transmission in the back. So I think this is the spot where we wanna build our mounts, which means we just have to build the mounts now. Something like this, and then we need another one to intersect downwards that way. So uh, two, now the other two bars are gonna be the hard ones, the one that go from here down to there to triangulate this whole piece. What's interesting is that this mount on the block actually sits uh, an inch and a half more forward than the mount on the other side. So like the bolt pattern comparable to where like the center line of the engine is or whatever is actually an inch and a half forward this way towards the front of the crank. Pretty weird, but it just means that this mount tips forward a little bit and this one tips backwards a little bit. There is the passenger side one and there's the driver side one. I was like, where's that burning sound coming from? And then I guess I, I was on fire. <laughs> Stupid ass. Dang, I'd be looking huge. Uh, let me just cut the hood off this hoodie real quick. <laughs> it's no more good, but I got about a billion of them anyways. So. If it'll even cut off, that's a good quality hoodie right there. Boostedlifestyle.com. <laughs> Good as new. There's our K-member mounts mounted up. It does look a little weird because on the engine itself, this one actually sits back like an inch and a half, just like these mounting bolts right here to the crankshaft. This side sits um, like an inch and a half more forward than the other side. Well up our motor mounts and good to go. This definitely won't be the last time we put the engine in, but it'll be the first time that we can put it in and then pull the engine hoist off it. So I'm super excited about that. The hardest part about this thing was getting this thing mounted in there straight. So <laughs> let's see how good we really did. I hope it's just like the first time suck getting those bolts in because that sucked. And there you have it. There's a Hellcat and a Fox body. This thing will be getting twin True North turbos. That's our own company. Make sure to check it out, True North turbos. You can find everything at blacksheepindustries.ca. Yeah, that's a finger band-aid. I didn't have anything else, so I just made a mechanic style one. If you haven't done this, then you ain't living, basically. Today, we're gonna put the front clip back on. We're gonna try and get the radiator and fans in place so we know how much room we have to put two turbos on this. The radiator we will be using is this SVE unit. It is made for a Fox body. And this is the exact same radiator we put in Gina's car to solve all our cooling issues after having that Mishimoto one not work really well on her twin turbo LS Mustang. That's a nice radiator. Now for simplicity, we're gonna wanna run an air to air intercooler. So the further that we can mount the radiator towards the engine while leaving enough room to still work on the engine and stuff, uh, that'll give us more room to run an air to air or a wider air to air and the bumper area here without having to cut too much out of the bumper. Now, instead of using like the factory style um, mounting points on the bottom, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sacrifice this engine mount here. I'm gonna take the two rubber bushings out of this piece. Then I'm gonna use some aluminum stock on the lathe and we're gonna build, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna build little thingamajigs that fit inside these bushings so that we can 
get a piece of metal, weld it onto the frame, use this bushing, and it'll just be easy. Oh my God, I'm gonna do that instead. I'm gonna cut this plate off right here, cut this down right here, and I'm just gonna weld that piece onto the car and it'll be super easy. Watch, I'll show you. Now what we're left with is this. I made these two little pieces that are gonna get welded to the bottom of here. Uh, these bushings fit inside that, and these will get welded to that cross member right there. And then the bottom side of the radiator is done. We just have to figure out a way to hold it on from the top. Bottom mounts are in, those are gonna be solid. Heater's definitely on today, minus 35 degrees Celsius, which is like 31 Fahrenheit. Like minus 31, sorry. Now this is my favorite part of any build. We get to put the turbos in. We have twin, one here, one on the box. True North Turbo, 67 millimeter turbos. This is our own turbo company. If you guys wanna see more, you can go to blacksheepindustries.ca. There's a turbo drop down tab. We do also have BSI blow off valves. BSI wastegates. Like I said, this stuff is just, and this stuff is just so, we strive for quality and it's gotta look good, so. I mean, look at that thing. Thing's beautiful. And we've got the wastegates to match it. I got one turbo mocked into place. That's the easy one. Trying to match that one on this side, always the hardest part. And they're not mirror turbo, so they're gonna be a little bit off, but we'll do our best to make them look even with tape and stuff. Here's our turbos. I have them almost as close to each other as I can get. They're not mirror turbo, so there's that. But this angle right here, but this angle right here compared to the flat of the radiator is the same on both sides. One thing that was a little bit tricky is you can see that this bar underneath this like the two front here goes way inside on this fender and the bar on this side actually like barely goes under. So I didn't do the two front on this thing. It made it hard to like match it with the fender and the bar because the bar and the fender on both sides are a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and put the manifold on this side and see where we need to cut that manifold off because we're gonna use the stock manifolds just flip. We are using the stock manifolds flip. This one needs a little bit more adjustment and uh, a tight radius bend, but this side we don't have to run into the alternator. So I can put this side on and possibly get started on this side. Now the factory style exhaust manifold looks like it's gonna flow quite well, but generally with a turbo setup, your most restrictive part of the exhaust anyway is gonna be the turbine wheel in here. So I think we'll be fine with these things. Now we'll also be using our BSI. Now we'll also be using our BSI billet T4 flange, and this is just gonna make it so much easier than trying to weld an actual pipe to a T4 flange, because that's super annoying. The pipe's just gonna fit in there. And then we're gonna have to go from here, we're gonna cut this flange off, weld a pipe on there with a V-band, and then from here up to here without interfering where the tire has to go. We're gonna leave it there for today. If you wanna see more of the Hellcat Fox video, make sure you're subscribed. And if you wanna see more of the F1 cart build, it's right here. Go click that. Peace easy, get that V.